Yes, sir? Okay, chum. This is Mr. Mercedes. I'd like to see Captain Simpson. Oh, he's in the basement, sir. Are the police still here? Yes, sir. You go on in, Tom, and take a look around. I'll join you in a minute. There's the jelly marks, Captain. Good morning, Mercedes. Morning, Simpson. Mr. John. Very much. Let it cleaned up, George. This must be a terrible loss to you, Mercedes. Oh, loss? Yes, no, Simpson, but it's a risk I have to take in my business. How does Miss Pascal like police boots all over new carpets? Oh, Helen, very upset. Well, this happening just at the time of a new collection. It's a great pity. But I'm sure you can console her. What? How are you making out? Private detective, eh? That's what it says there. I work for Mercedes. Who? Mercedes? He's just the guy who lost the jewelry last night. You'd better see the inspector. He's with Mr. Pascal now. Miss? If there's anything else you want to know, Inspector McLeod, be a dear with you and ask Captain Simpson. Yesterday was the opening day of our new collection, and I have so many things to do. Certainly. Highly fashion to the missus. I don't know the difference between tulle and organdy, except when it comes to pay. Come in. Mr. Conway to see you, Pascal. Oh, no, not another detective. All right. Mr. Conway. Yes, how do you do? Inspector, this is Mr. Conway. He works for Mr. Mercedes. Hello, Mercedes. Oh, didn't I tell you? All the stolen jewelry belongs to Mr. Mercedes. Dear Helen. Always talking of your favorite journal. How nice to see you. Inspector McLeod, Mr. Mercedes. My pleasure, Inspector. Well, I must be getting along now. Nice to see you all looking so well. Excuse me, sir. I would well, just like to please, ask Inspector, you. I have to be at my tables at quarter past. Conway here can answer all your questions for me. Happy hunting. Very busy man, Mr. Mercedes. According to this, there's 50,000 pounds worth missing. Or in your language, 140,000. Soup and feet, John, huh? Did you find any proof? Miss Pascal, we came here because we were informed you were wrong. Now it appears that none of the jewels belong to you at all, but you are Mr. Mercedes, who employs his own private police force. Oh, darling, you explain it to him. It's just so good at it. Well, it's more perfectly straightforward, Inspector. You 
see, we don't deal in jewellery ourselves. That's where Mr. Mercedes comes in. He lends it to us, and we take a commission on anything that's sold. Well, now that you know all about it, I expect you two detectives will want to put your heads together and decide who's to it. Oh, oh, ask any question you like, and Colin will show you around. Now, I really we must get back to the studio. Who keeps the keys to that safe? I do. Why? There's no harm in knowing. Well, I don't see how my men are making out. Mind if I tag along? Did you see the show here yesterday afternoon? No. I wish I had. The Mercedes was here himself. I ought to were employed to keep tabs on the jewelry. Sure. It so happens yesterday I had to fly over to France with a batch of merchandise for the Paris branch. Their show opens next week. You get around in your job? Quite a bit. More than I did for the FBI. You were in the FBI? Five years. Now will you tell me what you... Well, if I don't, you'll find out for yourself. <laughs> the professional job. Fingerprints wiped clean. The safe was blown by someone who knew what he was doing. Inside job? There's nothing to indicate that. And what about the night watchman? Well, he's in hospital with a nasty crack on the head. The story hangs together, though. I think I'll take a look around. It's all yours. Give me a ring at Savile Row if you find anything exciting. I will, I will. Trust a high-powered American flat to make a beeline for the model's room. Bring me the brooches. I make a new display. Monsieur is interested? I am interested in jewelry, but not in this, uh... Costume stuff. Oh. You are the famous investigator. I'm just making a few inquiries for Mr. Mercedes about the robbery of last night. And how can I help you, Mr. Conway? Uh, do you pick this stuff? Oh, the jewelry, I choose it all myself. Shall I explain to you? I'll go to the antique shops. You know, those thieves, they make a great mistake when they leave all this behind. Uh, but the pieces from Mercedes, you didn't have anything to do with choosing those? They're all. I have ten minutes before my fitting. I want a hat. A moment, Monsieur Conway. Pardon. Women. You like that? You never have anything here I really like, Sharon. Your Monsieur Mercedes knows a great deal about diamonds, but nothing about dress. Now, I tell you how I help him to give us the right jewels to go with the right dress. Sharon. Oh, you know I can't bear to think of little birds being killed to trim hats. Take it away, take it away. Oh, my lady, why do little birds have pretty wings? Madam and tell me this. Am I correct in thinking that you had a complete list of the jewelry supplied by Mercedes? Oh, of course you are correct. If I leave it to Monsieur Mercedes, he gives us blue sapphires to go with an orange dress. That's all I wanted to know, my This rail needs mending. Oh, Colin! Your mind has fallen. Oh, that's all right. I'm still in one piece. Now, look, darling, you get back to the studio. You've got enough to do. I'll get somebody to repair this. Oh, thanks a lot, old chair. Think nothing of it. You'd do the same for me. Or would you? Of course. I hope I have the opportunity. You have, right now. I want to talk to the girls who wore any of the missing jewelry. Oh, that's easily arranged. I'll introduce you to the models. In here. Oh, Mr. Conway. Have we answered all your questions? Yes, thanks. Besides, I want to see this demonstration. Over here, my dear. Yes, I like it. Of course, it's a sweet dress, but pink is such a difficult colour to wear, don't you think? Difficult? Ridiculous. Now, I think black would be so much more becoming. 
so much more you, milady, if I may say so. Uh, Chelsea, my dear, I want a little chat with you about those rubies, the ones you were wearing yesterday. Of course, they were stolen from our place in Sussex, you know, two years ago. I remember the rubies well. Such a shame the lady lost them. They would have gone so well with your new blood orange dress. And they were the teeniest bit like the stones that were stolen last night. They were the same stones. I knew the moment I saw the milky look in the large one. Quite unmistakable. And the lady's rubies were quite lovely. But you know, I think I like the diamond pendants even more. Now, they look divine with black. Pardon me. Do I know you, young man? It's no good talking to me about black tulle. I don't like it. I don't know that I can manage with Lady Spitting if you keep her any longer. I'm expecting Lady Nimmo any moment. But, Nelly, why didn't someone tell me I've been ready for the last half hour? And I must have my blood orange dress today. Look, uh, I'd Chelsea. like to work. Chelsea, you shall come with me and tell me how you like my new dress. Women. The old bat liable to keep her long? Until she can think of something better to do. You know, if you want to see some professional modeling, you should come in with Gina's here. Gina's not coming today. Is Gina another model here? Until the end of the week. That sweet young thing in there has just got Gina the sack. All because Chelsea's on the make for Captain Simpson. Oh? I thought Captain Simpson was Miss Pascal's boyfriend. All the girls are crazy about Captain Simpson. A ladies' man, huh? Well, what's he got that I have? Nice manners and a job in a fashion house. He's really the only man we ever see. I'm sorry for Miss Pascal. She's such a darling. Poor Helen's approaching the awkward age. She thinks the earth of Chelsea, and if she finds out that her little favorite... Jane, ask Chelsea to come up to the studio when she's free. I want to cut on her. What's the story of Lady Marchant's about a stolen ruby? Oh, that. Well, Lady Marchant came to the show yesterday and started making a scene. It was the opening day, too, which made it so awful. I was modeling a red dress called Blood Orange and wearing the rubies from Mercedes. She told me to come over and, and show her the dress and started saying the rubies were some that were stolen. She's batty. Most of the Marchants are, but madly rich, so we have to be polite to her. I haven't noticed her. Helen's been asking for you. Oh, Mrs. Oh, not again. You'd think I was the only model in the place. You soon will be if we lose any more. Well, Helen was bound to find out about Gina and Colin. So he's Colin now. And you went and told Helen all about him. Just the big pal. Forgive the interruption, but what gave Lady Marchand the idea the rubies belonged to her? Oh, that? Well, you heard her say just now something about a milky look in one of the stones. Well, she's nutty. Everyone knows that. Lady Marchand must have been a bit touched, though. She's bought the second of those blood orange dresses. Yes, Miss Pascal. Straight away. It's for you, Chelsea. Helen wants to know what you're doing. I've been admiring Lady Marchant in her blood orange dress. <laughs> the screen. Miss Pascal never did like it. Oh, of course. It's the one she cut on you. Well, I mustn't keep her waiting. House full of frustrated chicks. Now, what shall we talk about? About Pascal's and the stolen jewelry. Right, let's talk about Pascal. You're having fun, eh? You ever been to the zoo and watched the big cats pacing back and forth in their cages? Those dames are so wound up, you take your life in your hands. Oh, you must introduce me. The only introduction required is a fat pocket. Did you ever hear of any trouble between Lady Marchant and one of the models? No, I can't say I did. Miss Marchant Dame, maybe not. Maybe she isn't. She saw those rubies of ours at the show yesterday. Of the ones which were stolen last night? Yeah. But today she claims they disappeared from her house in Sussex two years ago. But how could that be? We brought them over from New York. That's the puzzle I'm trying to solve. Like, uh... Have you spoken to Lady Marchant? She takes a little knowing. Tom. You're a smart fellow. There are not many people who can take what I'm going to tell you now. Yeah. We are not going on with this investigation. 
not going on. But that's crazy. To let you into a secret, we can't afford a publicity. Miss Pascal has been ringing all the morning. Do you know, it's quite something to supply the most fashionable couturiers in London with jewellery. I'm replacing those jewels and sending you around with a new selection tomorrow. But, Mr. Mercedes... You I... keep your eyes on this lot. That's what you're employed for. this one out? Thank you. But our dresses aren't made for sitting in. Number 21, large orange. Dead. I'd like to see you after the show. That's a very nice idea. No, seriously, I found out something I think you ought to know. Okay. Number 20, night out. in this lonely town. Don't talk about me, baby. The best thing you can do. I hope you forget with no regret the plans that all fell through. I wish you all the same. I hear Chelsea lost your job. So they told you that. If you hang around the model's room, you can hear almost anything. It comes tumbling out. You just can't stop it. I watched the police this afternoon, testing the rail. Have they reached any conclusions? Yeah. They reached the conclusion it was an accident. Chelsea tripped on the landing and fell against the rail. Everybody at Pascal loved her. Too bad she broke her neck. Would you care to borrow my handkerchief? I suppose it's all right for you to be hard-boiled, but even if I didn't like her, I worked with her. I introduced her to Helen. Helen must be blessing you. What's on your mind, sweetheart? Something I ought to tell you. But not here, it's too public. I... Uh, I 
really making rather a fuss about this. But I thought you should know. Just before the accident this afternoon, somebody buzzed Chelsea on the intercom. Who? I don't know. Chelsea was hanging up as I came into the model's room and she went out almost immediately. That could explain why she waltzed out onto the balcony, just at the time when everybody was busy watching the show. Have you told the police? I thought it would be easier to talk to you. Oh. What do your friends call you? In the days when I had any, they called me Tom. Thanks. A cigarette? Thanks. Hmm. Gina with love. Call it. Very nice, too. Captain has good taste. Colin and I have been friends for ages. Suppose there was no call for Chelsea on the intercom. Suppose you invented it, just in case somebody suspected you. Of what? Chelsea could have slipped. On the other hand, somebody could have pushed her. Don't talk like that. She told tales to Miss Pascal. She lost you your job. She was on the make for Simpson. Oh, I can guess what you've been told. Of course, Colin's in love with me. But I'm not in love with anyone. So the captain consoled himself with uh, Chelsea? How much do you earn? Why? You can't keep an apartment like this without that uh, holding stuff. If you were in love with Simpson and needed the cash, you and he could have stolen. I don't think I like you very much. You'd better go. If you want to know where Colin was on Tuesday, he was with Chelsea. Check up if you don't believe me. I'm sorry. I know you have to find out what happened. But you'll find out a lot besides. Never get mixed up with a model. Mr. Conway, for your next drink. Hang on, Tom, I'll have to borrow some from downstairs. Anything else you'd like to see? Yes. The desk in the other room. It's locked. I should have thought of that. Jewels aren't there. I'm sorry. Good night. Madame Fernand here today? Madame Fernand? What do you want with Madame Fernand? Miss Teleredi wants to speak to her, will you? Madame Fernand, there's a chap named 
same Eddie wants to see you. Who? Eddie? No, I cannot see Eddie today. No, I cannot possibly see him. Sorry, chum. That's what she says. Oi! Come back! Philip, I want you to find the perfume for Lady Marchand and the telephone where we are sending it. Madame Fernand. Eddie! How dare you? Have you not read the newspapers? I'll read the papers. I've got some stuff that might interest you. Do you not know the police are here? Now that Eddie is here, he is here. But you do not stay. Look, Madame Fernand, I've got some real good stuff. I'll tell you what I'll do now to make it worth your while. You go straight away. Well, I'll nip down the car and get it, eh? Take him away. i see you in two weeks, three weeks' time. You'll be flaming lucky if you see me at all. His others will be glad to. Come on. Who's the boyfriend? Oh, he's, uh, how do you call it, uh, business acquaintance. Uh-huh. What sort of business? Mr. Conway, that has nothing to do with you. Madame Fernand, yesterday afternoon, just before the accident, somebody buzzed Chelsea on the intercom. You know, the intercom. Buzzed her. Called her on the house phone. Someone has buzzed Chelsea. Mais certainement. That is what the instrument is for. I want to know if it was you. Me? But why should I buzz Chelsea? What they do upstairs is nothing of my business. I have my own model girl, Phyllis, here. Have you found the parcel for Lady Marchand? It was here five minutes ago. Is this what you're looking for? Lady Marchand, 31 Palace Gate House. Ah, thank you, Miss. No trouble at all. I can deliver it for you. It so happens I want to talk to Lady Marchant on account of the... She lost a ruby. Pussy! Oh, my pussy, my darling pussy. Puss, puss. Say, Polly. Say, pretty. Say, pretty, Polly. Polly, pretty. <coughs> Yes? Inside, for no noise. Given all the details to your boys in Kensington. Face is knee deep in ectoplasm. I guess that's why she chose the bathroom. Mr. Graham? No, exactly in the bathroom. I use these things instead. You better watch your waistline. You know, after you phoned, I rang the yard. They're sending over the file on the Marchant robbery. It was a ladder job in Sussex. But we'll wait for the details. Proud of your finding system, aren't you? Well, of course, it isn't as up to date as your affair in Washington. I believe they feed the clues in one end and it prints the name of the criminal on the other. They've improved it. Right now they deliver them to you wrapped as a gift. <laughs> what have you been doing since you left the FBI? Playing around, 
Work for one of the big insurance outfits. Now I'm with Mercedes. Company you keep? You've got to eat. And I get expenses. <laughs> Mostly rye and gasoline. Besides, things got a little um, complicated for me in L.A. You know, anything for the quiet life. Ah, oh, yes, here we are. Took place in March 1951. Family were up in town for the weekend when the thieves broke in. I believe the old boys died since then. 60,000 pounds worth of jewelry stolen, nothing so far recovered. Here's the itemized list of the stuff. Diamond clip, value 5,000. Sapphire bracelet, value 8,000. Cabochon cut ruby of distinctive milky inclusion. Ruby, milky inclusion. I'll be damned. And everyone thought she was as nutty as a fruitcake. Thanks a lot, Mac. I'm on my way. been to see Lady Marshall, hmm? Most amusing character. I uh, didn't know you'd met. Oh, yes, certainly. How did you find her? Dead. With a bullet through the brain. There was blood all over her dress, which was uh, blood orange to begin with. The gun was by her hand. Shot through the mouth. Through the mouth, that's right. But I sent the brain. She uh, chose the bathroom. <laughs> I like your sense of humor. The bathroom, that's good. <laughs> Some people choose the oddest places to commit suicide. <laughs> and uh, others break their necks at the bottom of marble stairs. Yes. Yeah. In the midst of life, we're in death. Marble stairs. <laughs> Except that wasn't suicide. That was murder. Both those women died in blood orange dresses. It's quite a puzzle for the police. And they both could have talked to the police. But they can't anymore now. And the rubies aren't here to be talked about. Yes, it's quite a mystery. I like a good mystery. Like the case of the disappearing rubies? Or the lost ladies. There seems to be a connection. Well, I'll leave you to find the title. Miss Pascal has sent for me. It seems uh, that you're no longer welcome there. Are you firing me? Oh, no, 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 Tom, not firing you. Uh, transferring you to other spheres. You can pick up your ticket to New York for tonight's plane for my secretary. How did you guess I'd packed? You'll have plenty of time to get your things from the hotel. Happy landing. But why does I need to take a bathroom? We don't know what he's done with it. Not that I have anything against the fellow personally. But you don't want a private detective upsetting your clients. Exactly. It's not only the clients. Fernand nearly gave notice this morning. Well, to be honest, Fernand is always on the point of giving notice. But it isn't as easy as you think to get hold of a good Parisian milliner. I shall send Madame Fernand a note of apology and some flowers. <laughs> I haven't thought of anyone sending flowers to Fernand. She'll appreciate them all the more. As for Cogway, I'm transferring him to New York. So you won't see him again. And well, now I feel a bit sorry for that chap, Conway. I like him a lot better than I used to. Colin, I don't know how I should have faced all this pleasantness. Unless you'd been here to tell. I think much I've done, my dear. The papers came through from the lawyer today. Papers? Making you a partner in Pascal. I'd like you to read them. They need your signature. Oh, Helen, you mustn't be in too much of a hurry to sign things away. Oh, darling, you know how I feel about you as a partner and as a person. 
Somehow it seems so obvious. You and me. Yes, Gina? I've come to say goodbye, Miss Pascal. Goodbye. Yes, I've finished this evening. Perhaps we shall be able to work together again. Sometime. I hope so. Goodbye, Captain Simpson. And thank you very much for all you've done for me. But, Gina, you, you can't go like this. Excuse me. Looking for me, chum? I have a word with you, Gaff. They always told me the English waited until they were spoken to. I hate to think what this is costing you in gasoline. It's about Madame Fernand. I work for Madame Fernand. I worked for Madame Fernand for 20 years. Okay, so you work for Madame Fernand? Oh, I know it ain't strictly legal, but the cops ain't worried. It's not like pinching lead off church roofs. That's dirty work. Yeah, very dirty work. But I'm one who's always stuck in my own business, and the way I look at it, do my robbing. All right, so you're clean. I don't know what's eating you, chum. But... You're worrying, Madame Fernand, going around asking questions, stirring up trouble where there ain't no need. Well, lay off, that's all. Well, well. Tweedledum and Tweedledee. A finger, huh? I ought to have known. You forgot to pick up your ticket. We're going to take you to the airport. You're coming quietly. Uh-uh. This way. Anything funny, or you'll get it right now. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, you don't. No, sir, no. What's the angle? Suicide of detective? I'm sorry I didn't bring my red dress. Keep the smart talk for the boss. Now get in. him upstairs. Sid's with him now. Another car. Coming this way, too. What is this, a house party? I'll have to tell the boss. There's a 40-foot drop from that window and no drain pipe, so you needn't try any tricks. I'll be right back. Standing by, just in case. And this was all we found on him. Governor, there's another car... What do you mean by leaving him? But there's another car, another car coming up the drive. I just seen it. Another car? Yes. Two gentlemen outside asking to see you, sir. They say they're police. Where are they? They're waiting in the hall, sir. 
Show them in. All means, show them in. You two scram. Take Conway with you. He's not to talk to the police. Whatever happens, he's not to be found here. You can get out through the library. Good evening, gentlemen. This is an unexpected pleasure. We better introduce ourselves. I'm Inspector McLeod. This is my colleague, Detective Sergeant Jessup. I might have known. You stupid luck. The Mercedes can look out for his own skin. I'm getting out. Huey and Morrow. Who's your pal? I'm sorry, officer. You'd better come along with me. You take my car. We'll wait here with Mercedes. Oh, we go in the VIP bus, hmm? All right, Constable, I'll take over. You'll have to wait here until there's another car. I know, Mr. Conway. Very good, sir. I'll send a car right up. Mind if I have a look at that? Nice to see you, Tom. Should be. You've been to enough trouble. It's a puzzle, sir. It's addressed to Lady Marchant. Before your man Morrow tried to murder one of our constables, I'd come here to give you some news. We've recovered your jewelry. Well, that's excellent news. Congratulations, Inspector. Including a ruby, identified as having been stolen from the late Lady Marchant. Have you been in Paris recently? Yes, last nice week. All those stones were discovered today in your Paris branch, Mr. Mercedes. Now, wait a minute, Mac. You can't pin that on me. It was the day before the robbery I was in Paris. How did you get hold of this package addressed to Lady March? Mr. Conway will tell you that. Before either of you say anything more, I ought to tell you that Lady Marchant did not commit suicide. She was murdered. I didn't think they'd fool you. They didn't fool the police surgeon, either. Gentlemen. Gentlemen. I have a confession to make. You're not obliged to say it. I sign no until I'm charged and, and anything I say. What's the use, Inspector? You found out. You're too clever for me. There are occasions in life when one is driven to actions that are, shall we say, distasteful. Like uh, killing Lady Marchant? Yes, that was necessary. Only that trigger happy fool, Morrow, made a mess of the job. My plan was more subtle. Tom, you remember our chat about suicide? I've 
flesh is creeping. I was upset about the disappearance of this parcel. That's why I had to find out what you've done with it, instead of just eliminating it. Tell me, didn't you find it very heavy for a bottle of perfume? Well, I don't know what you're talking about, but you'll have plenty of time at the station if to explain. If Lady Marchant had got this parcel and pulled the strings, she would have been blown to smithereens. Now look here, Shall I Sadie? try? I'll pull, shall I? Oh, let's try. After all, how does it go? Life is nothing much to lose, only young men think it is. And we, we are not as young as we were, are we? Hmm? Then, if nobody wants me to experiment, I must ask you to unlock the window and put the key on the desk here. Better do as he says. You'll never get away with this, Miss Hades. One trick out of you and it's curtains for all of us. Right. Leave it open. Now put the key on the desk. My heroics, please, Tom. This thing is still dangerous. she'd buy enough to wash her underclothes. And perfume or not, Come here. I don't like your part in all this. You're coming back with me. It's not good enough. What proof have I got that it was Morrow and not you that shot Lady Marchant? Mercedes Page, you? That's right. And I stepped right up to Savile Row and put you wise. Mac, have a look. Well, it would have saved a great deal of trouble if you'd shown me this before. Do you mind if I hold on to it for the time being? Help yourself. The New England Insurance Company were the ones who planted me on Mercedes. They had a hunch he was receiving stolen jewelry in a big way, resetting it and shipping it abroad to his swank shops. It worked fine until he slipped up on the Marchant Ruby and stole back his own jewel. How did you locate the stuff in Paris? A little research in that card index of ours. Mercedes has got a record as long as your arm. I radioed the police in all the places he kept shop, and the serial they caught him on the hop. After all that, it's too bad he fooled you with a bottle of perfume. We'll pick him up, and that'll be the end of that. There's still some loose ends, like the guy who drives that old horse in. I want to get even with him, and a French milliner, and of course the girl who was thrown over the stairs. She wanted to talk to me badly, just before she died. Any luck? Afraid not. The car was too fast for anything we've got. I've sent out a teleprinter message to all stations. You'll have ditched the car by now. Warm the port part Do you mind if I ride back to town? You're not riding anywhere until we've cleared these credentials of yours of the New England insurance. And you've something to settle with the police here, too. What's that? A small matter of assaulting a constable in the execution of his duty. But the name, the thoroughness of the people here, I don't think you'll get to your bed very early. You don't your head. I was um, kicked by a canary. Too late for a wise crack. Aren't you going to ask me in? Well, I'll fix that head of yours if you go straight home, okay? Okay. The, um, the Sussex police were more welcoming. At least they offered me a cell. Don't say you've been getting into trouble with the police. Fix 
Ask yourself a drink. I'll go and see if I can get something. In the cupboard. You've forgotten so soon? Of course. And this time, you needn't bother to look in the bedroom. Okay, honey. You're learning. Yeah. Ouch. There. Thanks. Brian. Almost worthwhile being socked for. <laughs> Darling. Gina, you're out of it. We found the jewels. Mercedes is the one we're after now. Mercedes? I thought it was Mercedes who'd lost them. Turns out his swank shops were just a front. He was a receiver in a big way. Brains behind all those ladder robberies you read about. Well, champagne and caviar while it lasted, but he's for the hot seat now. But you can't be hung for stealing. I know, darling. But he had Lady Marchant killed because she recognized her own ruby. I can't believe it. What'll you do? I have some unfinished business at the scales. Gina, can you help me get in there tomorrow? Why? Someone at Pascal was playing along with Mercedes. Someone pushed Chelsea over the stairs. I've got to find out who. Can't you leave that to the police? No, I've got to handle this myself. Well, Tom, I don't see how I can help. I finished there yesterday. That's even better. I'll call for you. Ten o'clock tomorrow morning. Here. Yeah. Good night. Madam will understand that this dress was not actually made for Jane. It was cut on you. All right, I'll take night out. That is, if you like it, darling. But of course I do. You were wearing it the first time I met you, remember? Well, at least we know it fits. You better check to make sure. I'll wait for you downstairs. Excuse me. Tom's so generous. You know, this is the first time a man has ever bought me one of my own model gowns. Gina. I've been trying to telephone you ever since you left here. Excuse us a moment, Miss Betty. Jane. How do you think I feel about people coming in here and buying new clothes? People? Oh, Conway's a nice enough fellow. I'm not keen on him in that way. But you can't be. I mean, you hardly know him. Colin, I think you're jealous. Gina, you just don't know what it's been like since you left here. I do not talk to you. I think you have been on the way. I go for the porter. Suit you, sir. You go for the porter, I go for the police. What is it, then? What do you want of me? Yesterday I was fingered by a man who works for you. Fingered? Look, Madame Fernand, let's not be done. Yesterday a couple of Mercedes Hoods picked me up and give me a working over. And this punk of yours is the one who points me out. Catch? What does he look like, this, uh, how do you call him, punk? He's a small man, red face. He's wearing a cap and a string scarf. Drives an old Austin, BLY-749. Eddie! But what does he know of such men? Eddie is not a punk, he is a go-between. So you recognize him? If I show you, you promise not to tell the police. That depends on what you show me. You understand, I do not do this if there is any other way. I know it is against the English gaming laws, but women have to have hats and hats have to have feathers. You see, all these beautiful birds that Eddie brings me, osprey, kingfisher, it's not allowed to kill any of them. You see, Mr. Conway, it's not easy for anybody to like me. What's so funny? Well, laughs on me. I've been tailing a dead hummingbird. I beg your pardon, Madame Fernand. I'll keep my big mouth as tightly shut as this box of Oh, uh, Gina, why don't you buy yourself a hat while we're here? No, Tom, not today. You've done enough. Thank you, Fernand. Tom. Don't kill yourself laughing, but I have something to tell you. Colin Simpson has asked me to marry him. My, my. 
What did you say to her? I didn't know what to say. I told her we better talk to Helen. I think I've always known. And yet I kept hoping as time went on that you might fail. As she says, she'll marry you. Gina's behaved very decently. She knows how you feel. But she wouldn't give me a definite answer until I'd seen you. I was a fool to sack her, but I thought if she was out of the way, I... would have made any difference. I can't make people love you by getting rid of the competition. Simply fall in love with somebody else. One time I thought poor Chelsea was... Does Gina know that I've made you my partner? Yes. You don't think that would influence her? In any case, we can't possibly get through with that now. I signed the papers today. Oh, Colin, don't let me lose you. As a friend. Look, you mustn't take it like this. Well, how am I meant to take it? After five years, Colin. Do you know who this is? But I had to. I must have money quickly, a hundred at least. Now listen, I only have to tell the police who killed Chelsea. My little joke. Now look, don't let's call over pennies. I've still got a thousand or two salted away. No, I'm not here. In the country, that's the snag. I can't get at it. They're watching for me. But you could. Now look, you bring me the hundred and I give you the dope about the two thousand. Yes, yes. I'll write the combination down for you. Good. In an hour's time at Convict Street Car Park. rather curious that every time a corpse is discovered, you're round at this office like a, like a, a vulture. Okay, Mac, I give myself up. I just wanted to see what I stand for. Is uh, that asking too much? Oh. Uh-huh. One pair of dressmaker's scissors. You've been round to Pascal? What do you think? find anybody there exactly tumbling over themselves to admit the loss of a pair of scissors. Fingerprints? Now look here, Conway, I agreed to see you because I thought you might throw some light on this case, not to submit me to a cross-examination. I say it was too smart to be taken for a ride in an ordinary way. It must have been somebody he knew well, trusted. Yes? I've just collected the lab report on this, sir. Say any help? Very not. This is the contents of Mercedes pockets, who just not check. Mind if I look? Yeah, yes. Okay to touch? Yes, we're through. Trust you to go for the cheesecake. We checked the telephone number, it's just the cab rank. Fine foods and exotic drinks are a standout at the tropics. Well, the tropics has lost a customer. I wouldn't be too sure. I've never seen him there, but of course, um, I haven't seen everybody. Um, cigarette, Mac? You ought to know by now. From now on, Mac, we've got to work fast. 
Unless you've changed your mind about arresting me, I'm starting at a bistro right here in town. Good evening, Captain. Hello, Conway. Have a drink? No, no, these are on me. What are you having? Whiskey? No, thanks. No ice. Any usual for you, sir? How right you are. Make them both doubles. You look a little bit glum, Captain. You ought to be on top of the world. I hear you're engaged to Jim. Oh, I told you, did you? A nasty business about Mercedes. Anyway, I had the police around at Pascal's this afternoon. What do you expect? He was murdered with a pair of dressmaker scissors. You, uh, they suspect anyone? <laughs> the cloud wouldn't tell me if they did. I guess I'm number one on his list. Oh. Thank you. Cheers. Where's Jean? She's gone back to work. At Pascal? Yes. In the circumstances, Helen has been extraordinarily generous to her. Isn't it about time she showed up for a counter? I told you, she's working. At this time of night? Yes. Helen's cutting a dress on her. You never know when the mood will take her. Helen's just finished her new collection. Well, I suppose she needed something to take her mind of other things. Helen was very fond of me, you know. So out of all the models, she picks Gina to cut on. Well, Helen's an impulsive creature. Once she gets the bit between her teeth, there's no holding her. I don't like it. Huh? You saw the paper. Mercedes was stamped to death with a pair of scissors. Dressmaker scissors. Heavens, man, you're not suggesting that Helen... I suppose this affair with Colin has been going on for a long time. I thought Chelsea told you all about it. I have been very blind. Not blind, but stupid. Then what did you expect me to do? I loved him. I still love him. Well, come on, I'll drape something. To lose all three of those blood orange dresses, I must have something to repent in. Blood orange. They were well named. Two women have died in them. Poor Flo Marchant and... Chelsea. You should cry your eyes out over Chelsea. I liked Chelsea. Quite the favourite, wasn't she? All those cosy little talks you had while you were cutting on her. The little story she told you about Colin. She talked you into sacking me, remember? Gina, it isn't decent to speak about Chelsea like that. Decent? You didn't find it was a smokescreen. That Chelsea wanted Colin Simpson herself, you still liked her? It was then she fell over the stairs, wasn't it? I don't know what you're getting at. Just that you can't frighten me with a blood orange dresses. I'll tell you here and now, Helen Pascal, that if another woman dies in one of those dresses, it won't be me. Still a light in the window. Got a key? Yes, sir. Miss Pascal here? She's in the studio, sir. And Gina, Miss Fulton, I think they've all gone home. Anything wrong, sir? Come with us, Harry. How do you expect any normal man to behave? Colin Darling all the time? Everything you ever did was a proposal. He was sick to death of it. And what was I supposed to do? Compete with my own model? He's a grown man, isn't he? He'll never grow up. That's why he prefers model girls. He'd have married you if he'd had any sense. <laughs> that from you. You could have warmed his slippers for him in the evening. Made sure I changed into his long winter pants. Gina, do you love him? Love him? What does that matter? I'm going to marry him. If it's the money you want, Gina, take it, but listen to me. I'll take anything I want without being invited. As for you, Helen Pascal, you've lost your blood orange dresses, you've lost your man, you've given away half your business. Now all you've got left to lose is your own silly neck. And why not? Why not throw yourself over the roof? You've nothing else to live for. Keep up! Keep away! Miss Pascal, you better give me those scissors. Gina. I'm all right. 
Did she hurt you? So you think that I... You think that I was threatening her? Mistress Cowell. Then go for the police. What does it matter? Gina was right. What does anything matter anymore? Stay with Gina. I don't know. Beats a book, don't it? Miss Pascal, trying to throw herself off the roof. I asked you to stay with Gina. Well, Gina's all right now. She's getting dressed. Might have been kinder to let her do what she wanted. Oh, I don't suppose she could control herself. She must have gone for Chelsea the same way. Don't kid yourself. Helen's no murderess. Afternoon Chelsea was killed, she went to visit Harry here in hospital. I don't understand. Look, uh, see if you can find some brandy. And call Inspector McLeod. Tell him to hurry. I think you're all right, sir. Well, did the old bag throw us over? Yeah. What's the matter with you? Conway, he knows something. What does he know? He knows that Helen is in the clear. He's told me to ring the police. Well, don't just stand there. Get me out of here. Captain's certainly taking his time getting that brandy. Take care of her, huh? Thanks. Don't worry, miss. You'll be all right. Get me sample rope, police station. Yeah, hurry, please. You got it? Yes, yes, I have it here. He told me on the phone, we need all that and more to buy our way out. You've got the combination. When I die, these figures will be written on my heart. Six. Three right. Four left. Seven left. It's, it's empty. sense to me. Do I get the money back? At least Mercedes was a man. As for you, a foxy, broken-down soldier who could never make up his mind. If you hadn't been such an infatuated fool, I couldn't have talked you into stabbing Mercedes. 
The only reason I agreed to marry you was because Helen made you a partner. I have to live now. Mercedes is gone, and I don't need you. I wouldn't do that. Stay where you are. Why, my, where did you find that? It's hardly the time to be funny. Have you two had a lover's quarrel? He double-crossed me. He took the money from the safe. You don't really believe he double-crossed you. It was Mercedes. But Mercedes is dead. The police opened that safe. There never was anything in it except checks. Stay your checks. Mercedes was always one for a joke. It looks... <laughs> Mind if I straighten up? This is giving the housemaid's knee. And on the subject of double crossing, you've been lying to me, Angel Face, right down the line. You killed Chelsea, didn't you? You invented that call on the intercom. It was a nice idea. It just didn't hold water. Mercedes made me kill her. She found out about the rubies. And do you know how I found out about you and Mercedes? left a pack of matches in your apartment. They turned up in Mercedes' pocket. What are you going to do with me? What do you expect? I'm still a detective. The police will be here in a minute. It's too bad it had to work out this way. <laughs> 